Hello everyone, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Adventure. Welcome back and it's part three now of the A20G Havoc build from uh, Hong Kong Models, 132nd scale. And as you'll have already seen in part one, we did the cockpit build out of the box. In part two, we did the cockpit build using the Edward Photo Etch set. And we've actually added some levers and stuff rather than using the Photo Etch ones. If you remember, we added some levers on this rear bulkhead here. Um, and these are for cowl flaps and landing gear and this is a hydraulic pump down the bottom and this one up here is an emergency pump or something so we've got so we've done some work around there and I've left all that in place for this build this build is going to be using the air scale set which is a lovely set indeed and it has as you can see photo etched nickel silver decals and acetate sheet so basically Going to be really really nice we've also got some other details like this top piece here and a few other bits and pieces to go in so this build is going to be my chosen final build of the cockpit so it will be done properly if you like we'll be doing some weathering we're going to use some anise um, toggle switches and some leave, uh, knobs and dials and stuff we're going to be making up the photo etch seat as you can see here and we'll be using um, soldering for soldering that together so that'll be all nice. You'll enjoy that, I'm sure. And then I'll show you how I'm going to go about putting this together. We'll probably do some painting on the fret and then apply some decals and then sort of get it all glued together. But as I say, this will all be permanent. So this will be like the proper job, if you like. Um, I need to get these vertical members off of the seat, which shouldn't be too difficult. I'll probably just soak it in some water and see if that will dissolve the glue um, and go from there. I'm going to add a decal to the um, column. There's a decal here. A, a data plaque and I'm going to use one of air scales because um, air scale do a massive range of decals for instruments for cockpits and everything you get instruments data plaques in, in all the different scales and everything so um, I'll be showing you that and we'll have a look at that as well um, so the other thing we need to look at is this is going to be the major part of the first part of this video is this talk about the instrument panel now Everybody's saying over on the group uh, on uh, Facebook and everything, everybody's saying the instrument panel looks like it's too far forward. When you actually put it in the kit, you can see on here, I've got a piece of tape and I've marked where everything is. So you can see this here is the control column. This here is where the instrument panel is. And this here is where I think it should be. This here is where the, the bulkhead goes. So basically, if we pop this into that fuselage half, and the only alignment I've got is this little corner piece here is going to wedge up into there. So we'll just basically roughly put this in place like so. There we go. Oh, come on, stay in place, please. There we go. So that is sat there now. It doesn't want to stay in place because the camera's on. And you can see here the instrument panel is way, way forward. I'll tell you, what, I'm going to do it on this side because that piece of bloody masking tape is in the way, isn't it? So if we do it on this side, we can see that the instrument panel is now coming off. We can see that the instrument panel is way deep down inside underneath that combing. OK, and I believe it is too far in. So I've been looking around and looking for some research and, you know, trying to see what's right, what's wrong, whatever. Um, and looking at photographs. We've got photographs in our book here of the cockpit. Let's just put that to one side. It's going to be glossed out, I expect, by the bloody light. Yeah, I need to turn this light off. Right. Um, <clears throat> if we look at photographs, like for example here, in this photograph here, you can see we're basically looking down the line of the back of the seat. So somebody stood above the seat and they're taking a photograph, basically looking down the line of the seat. So that's what they're seeing. And if you look at that, with that in position, like that, sort of looking down the line of the seat, if you imagine, you can see here on my fingers, that's the back of the combing, you can't see the instrument panel at all. So I'm sure it's in the wrong position. So I started digging around for some drawings. And as you know, I always say, you can never trust drawings. So I've got this drawing here scaled it down to roughly 30 seconds scale and if we put the fuselage over you can see here that I've got I've got this about right just let me get this light back on now I've got this to 
you know, in the ballpark of 30 second scanner, you can see that's all lining up there beautifully. Okay. And if I put a pencil line where the instrument panel is on the Hong Kong models kit. Oh, look. It's exactly where it is on that drawing. So I believe this has come from some documentation or something that Hong Kong Models has used that shows that there. So they've done it perfect to a drawing. And if you remember back on the 132nd scale B17, I also found there that their kit, the inaccuracies in the kit, line up perfectly with a drawing. I can't remember the publication now, but I found the publication that they'd probably used. So I think this is one of the issues about using drawings. Now you can see here, there's the edge of the combing and there's the instrument panel. That photograph we saw, the camera was sort of here, okay? So it was looking, and if you look, if you look where that camera is, you can't see anything, You're just about the bottom edge of the instrument panel. So I believe that instrument panel needs to come back about six millimeters. Okay, so I'm probably going to move it back something like somewhere between four and six millimeters just because I think it's going to look better. Now, this could be 100% correct. I just can't see it. I just can't see, you know, how, you know, that camera, when you look at that photograph there, that camera is sort of. I mean, it, it's even forward of the seat. You can see it's, you know, it's kind of, it's here. And that makes it even worse. So I'm sure this is incorrect. So obviously Hong Kong models, well, I'm assuming Hong Kong models have used this or a drawing from a similar publication. And that's where they've got the idea from that the instrument panel is that far forward. The other thing I've been looking at in this book here, let's get that light off again. You have various photographs. Here we go. Um, showing the cockpit. And there's one here that shows the instrument panel, the hole above it. Where is it? Maybe I saw it online. Oh, there we go. You can see there's a hole there in the edge of the combing. And when you look in there, you can see the top edge of the instrument panel. And that hole, let's bring this closer. That hole is quite near the edge of the instrument panel, the combing. And you can see when you look down in the hole, you can see the top edge of the instrument panel. So I believe it has got to come back. So what I want to do to move it back. Oh, the other thing we have to be careful of. I'll just grab the kit instructions. Paper everywhere here. One thing, another thing we have to be aware of, aware of is when it comes to all the interior. Oh, come on, where are we? Do, 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 here. Here we have the uh, levers and everything for the throttles and everything going on here. So I've had a look at this part and that part actually fits on this tab here. So I've measured from the slot in this part that goes onto that tab and to the edge of there it's eight millimeters. And then the lever is about another six millimeters. So roughly 14 millimeters forward of there is gonna be where that lever is gonna stick out, that lower lever there. So roughly 14 millimeters from there, you can see that's gonna come about in line with the back of this piece here. And you can see here is where the instrument panel goes. So the instrument panel currently to that back of that is 18 millimeters. So we could only really bring it back four millimeters and the levers are going to be right up against it, but then they might be out of position as well. So we'll bring them back. So we'll have a, we'll have a good look and um, we'll have a little play and see what happens. But I really do not want to leave it where it is. It's just too deep in there. It's, it's, it's just, it's just too deep in there. I, I, I mean, there's no way that instrument panel is that deep in there in real life. There's just, I mean, look at it. There's just no way that that is, is correct. It's so far in. 
I mean, why would they have the instrument panel that far away from the pilot anyway? So it's going to be a simple case of moving it back. As I've mentioned before, in the group, I've seen people have just basically moved this back and butted it up. I've seen another guy who cut a section out of it here. Let's put this light back on. I've seen another guy who cut a section out here and then brought it back so it was over that. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to remove some material and bring this down at a less steep angle so that basically we'll have we'll have that sort of thing as I've drawn on there okay so it'll look like it'll be like that and then bring it back that way and that there as you can see is what's that that's four millimeters so I think that's going to make it look a bit better anyway um, but as I say, I mean, I think Hong Kong models have worked to that drawing or, or a similar drawing and hats off to them. They've got it dead right to the drawing. But as I've always said, you know, modelers, people who are after accuracy and stuff, beware. Restored aircraft and drawings. Restored aircraft are sometimes, you know, done to look pretty. So when they sit in a museum, they look right. They could have made the instrument panel up out of a piece of plywood and a load of old Lancaster gauges for all you know. Be very, very careful with restored aircraft, particularly restored aircraft that are flying because they will often have additional instrumentation, instrumentation easy for you to say, um, and then they'll all be painted all glossy and everything. Just be very, very careful, but always, always, unless they're blueprints, be very, very wary of drawings. I've seen people say... You know, the tail is the wrong shape because I compared it to this drawing. It's The drawing is an interpretation of the aircraft done by an artist. OK, it's not real. So always be very wary. So I'm going to make a crack on this. Um, start doing up some measuring, start drawing some lines and get the drills out. So uh, see you in a second. OK, so this is now about three hours later and I've been absolutely driving myself crazy going through the book, going through the internet. I've been, uh, via email, I've been speaking to Peter from Hairscale. And I'm kind of wondering, maybe Hong Kong models got this right, you know, because when you sort of start looking around at different pictures, um, it would appear that it's all sort of right. Just the instrument panel is a little bit too far in. Because... When you sort of fit, when you fit the throttle um, assembly in, the when you look at photographs, that sort of lines up vertically with this raised section here in the floor, which goes into there. So you can see that's lining up vertically with that. So the actual position of that raised section is correct. It looks like the position of the control column is correct. Maybe it could be a little bit further forward. I'm not sure. Um, but then something that Peter spotted, which I thought was absolutely amazing. He said, if you look at the, the width of this panel here, which is seven millimeters, the distance from the back edge of the combing going forward to this piece on the side is about the same. So if we look, you can see that's 11 millimeters in the kit. So bringing that back four millimeters and then bringing the instrument panel back four millimeters, I think is going to get it right. But I also think that doing that is going to make these too steep. But I think it's going to look a lot better visually. So I don't know. There's definitely something not right. But I think Hong Kong models have got a really good representation of what should be there. Um, there's no way it's a million miles out. And when you do look at photographs, I mean, if you go online, I can't remember where now, please don't ask, but I found a, a correction that was used in the war where they added a stiffener here to stop the um, gun sight from vibrating. And it certainly looks like it's a decent length. So, you know, there's a certain amount of material there. So I, I don't know. I'm just going to bring it back to make it look a bit better uh, because I think it just looks wrong. We'll just look once more. I just think it looks wrong having it that deep in there. I think it needs to come back to about there. 
okay so that's why I'm not going to have it there I'm going to have it back here okay I'm going to bring it back about four millimeters and then this side piece will come back about four millimeters we're gonna to have to try and cut that lamp of that piece there I think that's like a lamp or something um, trying to have to have to try and bring that back as well I think um, and then also we're gonna to have to make sure that we don't foul these levers on here so um all good so that's what we're gonna do the other thing I've noticed is looking at photographs this seat appears to be way forward um, and it's kind of pushing the control column forward so I've done a little measurement and when you look at this seat if you go from the rear corner of the seat up to the front corner of the seat it's roughly 15 millimeters as you can see there if we look at Peter's seat and I reckon Peter's seat is going to be more accurate than that one that seat is about 12, 12 and a half millimetres. So straight away we've got a couple of millimetres there. So when we put the control column vertical, that's going to look a lot better. Because if we put it vertical against that seat, it looks like it's going to be hitting it. So, um, so that's good. So that's one good thing. But um, I'm going to basically just move it all back about three, four millimetres, whatever it works out to. And um, just to make it look a bit better I think so you can see the instrument panel when you look in but it's really got me fuddled this one um, you know when you look at the 132nd scale B17 the seats are too far back for the rudder pedals that's just obvious you can see that but with this it just I don't know it just I, I cannot get my finger on it um, it seems like there's something wrong but everything every time you reference something to something else it, it all works out right it's just that the relationship of this position here to this position here seems out. But then you think, you know, well, the, maybe the combing's too long, but it's not. It looks dead right. So, who knows? <laughs> right, let's get cutting and drilling. Okay, so I've worked this out, um, how I'm going to do it. So there's a there's a million different ways to do this. What some people have done is actually, I think I mentioned before, they cut a section out of that, pushed it back. Um, you could just push it back. There's all sorts you could do. What I've decided to do um, is basically bring it forward about three millimeters and perhaps bring the whole thing sort of butts up against this cross. We'll see, we'll see how it looks with the three millimeters. Now, obviously, if we tip this up, I've drawn this here three times size. Okay, so obviously, if you have something which is like this angle, if you bring it up to that angle, it's obviously going up as well as coming forward. So I've done this, I've drawn this three times, and this is about 10 millimeters here, about nine and a half millimeters, something like that. So it's, it's going to be just over the three millimeters. Um, and if I tip this up and keep it the same length, then it actually lifts this point here, this point here, which is that point there. Okay, what I've actually drawn is that there. Look. So that's going to lift that up uh, about five millimeters which a third of five millimeters is about 1.8 in it, something like that. So what I'm thinking is if we cut the bottom off of here, because it's hollow in behind there, if we cut the bottom off of there and keep it nice and straight, we'll have like a flat plate with the lug on it. Then if we cut an angle up here, up to this corner, we can then glue that back on and we'll have this edge here and we'll have, we'll have removed about 1.8 at the same time, giving us the angle forward and obviously then we'll have to do a slice here and just pull the instrument panel back so it's square to the base so I'm gonna I've got my ASK saw here which is all set up and ready to go so I'm just gonna come in get the light a bit better for me uh, I'm just gonna come in with the saw and just make a mark in that corner and what I'm gonna try and do is keep it so that the saw stays on the on the edge of the plastic so it, all I do is cutting is removing the flange okay so there we go right so I should be able to come along now and saw this keep it straight it doesn't really matter if it's oops, I'm slid off then it doesn't really matter if it's not perfect because at the end of the day we're modelers and we're, we're supposed to mess around with bits of plastic that we cut up and as all of you know, that this is the side of the hobby that I love, is modifying stuff. So, I'm just 
gently cutting this out. There we are. It's, I can feel it dragging on the surface, so I know that I'm pretty true. But this, the whole idea is I want to keep it nice and square. So I'll have to come at an angle now to reach the bottom. And now I'll have to do the same on this side, which is going to be really awkward because I'm because that other side is in the way. So what I have to do is come along like that and just keep cutting and try and keep our saw sort of parallel and everything. And that should give us our separate piece on the bottom. There we go. And as you can see, I've messed up there. I've, I've, oh no, I've, I thought I'd messed up. It's just a slither. That's going to be absolutely fine. So what we need to do now is glue that back on, but glue it on at an angle. So I'm going to remove that bit of plastic from there where I've messed up. Don't do this at home, kids. I always cut towards my finger. I very, very rarely cut myself, so but it's not a good idea to do that. I've got this worn out and fiddy stick here. So we just sand this and get it nice and flat and level and everything. Okay, so what we've done now is cut through the bottom of there roughly one millimetre up, so say three millimetres on here. So we've now cut through there and removed the bottom section there. Okay, I've sanded it down. It's about 1.15 millimeters thick. Now here I've had to do a bit of sanding because I did go off a bit on the inside here. So it was all a bit of an angle. So what I've had a change of plan rather than try and cut the angle in. I think what I'm going to do is get this all sanded off square so that we remove everything up to here. So basically we're going to remove this here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is put this back on, this bottom piece, with a piece of packing at the back. And then we'll have a consistent, nice um, edge rather than trying to get it all to blend in. And then we can just fill some plastic card, super glue, whatever. And then we'll, uh, we'll see what, how we're looking. So I'll get that done and then I'll come back. Okay, so we've got a piece of two millimetre rod here, which is a little bit more than I would like. But not to worry, there's no, uh, no big accuracy thing here. Um, I'm just going to put a drop of extra thin quick setting on there. There we go. So that can hold that in place. Just temporary. I'm using round for those that are wondering. I'm using round because because of the angle. If I use square it will sit on the corner but if I use round it's easier to ensure that everything stays square and everything. Um, if you look at the sign bars and everything, they've, they've always got round bars on them because it just just makes sure everything is round, uh, is, uh, is flat. And then basically that is going to glue on there like that. So what I need to do is I'll get some ordinary extra thin on here, I think nice big drop on there and then that can go on to there like so and then we can kind of square everything up and make sure it's all looking good get some extra thin onto there okay and then I'm going to use my digital calipers to make sure everything is square just pull them together like that and that will pull everything into the correct position. Just get some extra thin on the front there and hopefully that will be job done. As you can see we've got a gap there we can put a plastic card in there, super glue, whatever and that will actually hold it. So you can see now when we put this down in here What's happening now is the instrument panel is leaning back, obviously. Okay, so we're going to have to actually make a cut to bring that back. 
what I can look at now is what the overall height is because it, it was 26 and now look it's going to be about 27 which is fine we've got an extra mil mil and a half to play with anyway because as as the instrument panel comes back it, the combing sorry it also goes up as you can see there so uh, at the moment it's all going to plan I'm going to check that is kind of square yeah that's good enough it's um good enough it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect as I say we can, we can sand it fill it and blend it or whatever so that's that side done all we've got to do is make the other side match so um basically we had here um what was it it was about 1.8 so this is obviously a lot thicker here that's uh let's not use the end of the rule it's bad practice to use the end of the rule um so that's nearly three so that's like 2.8 so that would be like nine mil on here so you can see it's going to be a lot higher up so we're still going to have a, a bigger flat on there i think in reality it angles back anyway on this one but what we're going to do we're just going to cut this one off the same and then we're going to make it match this side but uh, i don't want to do anything permanent here until i know that it's actually until i know it's good but we can see here if we um if we put a square on there we can see how much forward we've gone and we've actually got uh, sorry we've got about three millimeters three three and a half millimeters so that's great that's going to be just enough to just bring it back so it looks a bit better that's all don't want to go too mad because I say I, I'm beginning to wonder if Hong Kong the Hong Kong model's got this right and it's just that all the all the photographs are fooling us. I can't see it somehow, but um, it just doesn't seem right. It just doesn't. It's kind of everything you look at. It all sorts of adds up when you look at as pieces in relation to each other. It's all adding up. But uh, when it when you sort of look at it in physically look at, at the model being built up, it just doesn't look right. And everybody's saying the same. So it can't just be me going mad, surely. Right. So I've got to cut this side off now. And then rework it to do the same. So I'll, I'll do that and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, we've got the, the angle cut into that one now. We've got the, filled up the hole with some plastic card and then some black um, CA. We'll let that all dry off for a while before we do any priming because it does tend to slightly shrink back at times. Um, we've also got that line there. What the sand and dust. Just get that out. Um, so there we are. So you can see that will now sit in those original holes. So we get a nice positive location. Um, it's accurate at the bottom, so it's, it's sitting back from the from the cross member as it's supposed to. And there we go. But as you can see now, the, the instrument panel is leaning forward, so we need to tip that back. So what I need to do is grab a a block, grab a Mr. Prepared as usual. I'm going to grab one of my one, two, three blocks. So we can put that on there. And then I could grab a rule. Where is my normal? Where is my normal rule? There it is, hiding. And a scriber. This is a good old friendly Tammy a scriber. So we can put this on here. And what we will do now is where is that? That lines up. Yeah, okay. So we need to scribe here parallel with that bottom edge of the instrument panel there what I'm going to do is scribe just scribe a line there just to weaken the plastic a touch okay so you can see there we've, we've scribed a line I'm just going to make that come across there like that and now we should be able to bend this I'm gonna to have to scribe it deeper I'll go and I'll, in fact what I'll do rather than scribe it I think I'll cut it because that way it will remove some material it's gonna be a lot easier to cut it than, than scribe it so we'll get that on there we can just 
come with our blade and cut it parallel to that bottom edge of the instrument panel. It's quite hard plastic Hong Kong models so it may actually snap unfortunately. Um, but there we go and now what I'll do is scribe it to open it up. So we've sort of got a V section so it'll make it less likely to snap it. It's more likely to bend if it's uh, if it's got somewhere to go and then we'll turn it around and do it this way as well. On there. So you can see now what we've done, we've scribed, we've cut a big section out of it so it should now bend back. There we go. And what we want to do is get it to bend back so that it's square to the cockpit floor or perpendicular to the cockpit floor. So we still need to go back a bit more. I'm thinking it's probably going to snap. Need to take some more out of there I think. Take some more out of that one. And I'm keeping the camera on so you can see what I'm doing rather than just say this is what I've done. Because you may want to do this as well. You probably can't see what I'm doing right now because my fingers in the way, but you know what I'm doing, don't you, basically? Right, get that block out of the way. We'll fit this into here. Okay, we've still got to go some more. You can use a rule as a square. You can see that it's not square, it needs to come back some more. So I'm going to have to take out even more plastic. I'm, I'm worried I'm going to go through here. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if we do, it just means we've got to glue it back on. But I just want to remove, remove enough plastic so that it's got somewhere to go. getting close to snapping now you can see it's all turning white yeah we're there now I think we're there put that up against there you can see we're nearly there just a bit more a bit more <laughs> there we go we're vertical so I'm just going to run some super glue into that crack to give it its strength back and fill the gap. So I'm just going to put some super glue in here. This is the VMS black. So that could go in there. And we'll put some in there as well. I seem to have the shakes today. Right, so there we go. I'm thinking actually I'm going to make this a standalone video as how how I move the instrument panel rather than rather than do the air scale because otherwise it's going to be like a two hour long video isn't it it's going to be ridiculous so I'm just going to check that for square it needs to come back a bit okay so now we've got that square I can come along with the Megamo accelerator that's not working. Come on. Just drip something out. Bloody useless. Pull that back. There we go. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. I'm just making fuss for the sake of it, but uh, there we go. You can see now that's nice and square. Okay. 
there we go so let's have a look in our fuselage and see how it looks so we can drop this in you'll notice as well I think I don't think I don't think I mentioned it I've built up the nose gear bay because it's just a better job and there we go you can see we've moved that forward um, and yeah it's uh, it's it's good so we've moved that forward about three millimeters I should have measured it before but it was designed before to sit underneath that ridge there and you can see that, that ridge there we've, we've moved it forward so it's probably still too far in when you look at it like that but it's it's just that bit better um, I think we're all assuming including me I think we're all assuming it sits further back than it really does um, in real life but um, in fact I, I do know how it is because this drawing perfectly matched it so if we go from that rear window to the instrument panel it is 46 millimeters and if I measure from that window now to the instrument panel it is about 42 millimeters so there we go so yeah we're uh, we're in oh hang on let's pull it forward a touch in fact it's not even sitting in properly so what is it now it's it's about 43 millimeters so we've come forward roughly three millimeters so I'm happy with that that's, that's enough isn't it there we are we haven't changed anything too drastically all our photo etch is still gonna fit you know whether you're using the Edward air scale whatever you're using we haven't changed the shape of anything um, all we've done is just brought it forward a touch so I'm happy with that and uh, just gonna give this a, a quick clean remove that scribing debris from there and that's all nice and strong so that's cool and as you can see we can put that in there like that and when we put it up against our drawing like so we can see or can we we can see we've come back about three millimeters now the height to the top of the instrument panel was 26 millimeters let's grab one of my little blue rules and you can see it's still 26 millimeters so all in all it's all worked out great for us so there we are that's that's moved it back about three millimeters if we want to we could cut those leg lugs off and push it back up and that'll give us another i don't know another millimeter and a half i guess but um i'd rather have a little gap there to be honest so there we go happy with that you could do the same you could put some more angle on there bring it back even more you could just do as i say what some other people have done is cut a section of the leg out and have it back but if you want it to stay sort of accurate looking as the real thing is with a way with this instrument panel back front or forward of that cross member piece then um then you can do it like i've just done it but there we go so as i say this was going to be <laughs> the third cockpit build I think we'll have it as a standalone. As I say, otherwise it's just going to go on and on and on, isn't it? So I can get this all, let that dry, get it primed and painted, and then we can move on with the with the air scale set. So thank you for watching. Um, I'm sorry, <clears throat> I haven't done the. Uh, well, the thing is, actually, you weren't expecting it any, would you? Were you? So um. If I said it in the beginning I was going to do it, I'll edit it out. So if it sounds a bit weird at the beginning, you know why. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you all very, very soon for part three, which will be building the, uh, the well, it'll be part four, won't it? Building the actual air scale setup. And that will apply whether you've done this modification or not. It makes no difference whatsoever. So I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.